Now we're going to start setting up some chemical reactions, and to do that we're going to have to have some terminology and jargon. Now, whenever we have reacting, it's going to be our reactant. If I'm setting on fire some gasoline, the components in the gasoline plus oxygen are going to yield some sort of a product. And notice that I've worked in the word yield. Yield is basically going to stand in as the arrow in a balanced chemical reaction. It tells us that with these starting materials, it makes, yields, some set of products. Now those products are the things being produced by a reaction. And notice that we're talking about the arrow. So we're going to have reactants on this side and products on this side. Now stoichiometry, notice that it's got the OI, IO, oikio, so oink, eo, stoichiometry. These are going to be the smallest whole number ratios between our reactants and products. So suppose what I'm doing is I'm building something and it takes, no, it could take 15 of these in order to make 30 of these. You can see that is not going to be the smallest whole number ratio. We would drop its stoichiometric coefficients be two, oops, be one, and two. And as always, if it's just the number one, we often just omit that because it's redundant. If we had zero, we wouldn't have written the R. If we have two, we will write the number two. So if there's only one, we just omit the number one. So one reactant yields two products in this case. Okay, so that's our, an example of stoichiometric coefficients. We're going to see an example of that in action here in just a moment. Now, here's a quick concept for us. You can do this on pen and paper at your table or computer, wherever you're sitting right now. Go ahead and sketch out an H2 molecule and an O2 molecule. Better still, if you have a model kit in front of you, go ahead and build that. Pause the video and give it a shot. Okay, so let's take a look. If I were to draw that, I'd have an H and an H. I have an O double bonded to an O. Now, if I take hydrogen gas and oxygen gas and I ignite it, it's going to generate water. So go ahead now and figure out how many of these hydrogens we need and how many of these oxygens we need so that we can assemble water molecules and have none left over. You're allowed to add as many of each of these as you'd like, but they have to be in sets. So if you do hydrogen, you've got to have the whole set of hydrogen, H bond H. For oxygen, O double bonded to O. So go ahead, tweak these ratios until you can get it so that you make a whole number of water molecules. Give it a shot. Okay, so if I'm making a water molecule, H2O, here we are, I'm going to need two hydrogens for every one oxygen. That means I'm going to have to have twice as many hydrogens as oxygens. Notice that I'm going to have four different hydrogen balls right now and two different oxygen balls when I tear the whole thing apart. That's going to allow me to make two of these water molecules. Four hydrogens at the beginning, two here times two here, that's four hydrogens at the end. So four hydrogens and four hydrogens. I have two oxygens, I've got one times two oxygens. No matter has been created nor destroyed, so that follows our laws of matter. Now, go ahead and pause and try writing that as a balanced chemical reaction. Okay, so my reactants were H2 and O2. I had to have two hydrogens, so I'll put the coefficient out here in front. Remember that when we have a coefficient in the front, that is not changing anything about the structure. What it's communicating is that we had two different hydrogen atoms. In other words, we had, sorry, two different hydrogen molecules. We had this and we had this. That's what this communicates. The two in the front means there's two of these. The two at the end means that there's two atoms that are connected. Make sure that you're keeping those numbers distinct and make sure that you're using both correctly when you write these reactions. 
So I had H2 and O2 yields, that's going to be my arrow, H2O, and we say we're going to have two of them. In a nutshell, that's what we're going to be doing when we're balancing a chemical reaction. Now we're going to see some mathematic tricks to make that go easier and faster and let us get good quality, authentic, correct values for more complicated reactions and molecules. But under the hood, this is what you're doing every time and try to remember that at all times. It'll help take away some of the, the fear factor of learning this that some people face.